Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Alex Norris. Um, and for those of you who don't know, doop, uh, I make the webcomic called Webcomic Name. Um, and so with the, this webcomic, it's a bad webcomic. And the punchline is always the same. Uh, it's always, oh, no. So just to kind of get you introduced uh, to that, I'm going to show you some, uh, some examples. So this is quite an early one. Look how awful this drawing is. It's so bad. <laughs> Even worse than it is now. Um, again, the punchline is the same. <laughs> Very popular with uh, teen girls, that one. Uh, <laughs> it's fun just waiting for the laughter. This is nice. This one's really, really mean. This is like a, th a theme in my comics is being really mean to my characters because they're not real, but you feel emotions for them. And sometimes, so <laughs> they're... I make, re I make relatable, they're kind of like a parody of relatable comics. Sometimes I like to be, you know, with relatability, you can be like, oh, that's, you know, I do that, that's really wholesome. Sometimes I like to be a bit, a bit mean. I thought for this uh, environment, this might, you know, uh, be a bit close to the bone for kind of <laughs> creative people. And then, <laughs> this one was really popular around Brexit and Trump. Everyone, <laughs> It, it was like a huge boost uh, in what I was doing. And so yeah, that's a summary of uh, the comics I make. <laughs> so, webcomic name is like a really, uh, when I started, it's like a really crystallized kind of idea. Uh, it was the second uh, webcomic series that I've done. And the, uh, the first one I did was called Doris McComics. Uh, I just finished university. And uh, I, I was like, I want to be a writer. May as well do web comics because not many people make them, but a lot of people read them. So it's a really good uh, format for writing. But I wanted to be really clever, and I was I cared a lot about people thinking that I was uh, really good at making comics. So a lot of the first ones uh, were a bit more like this one. This is an example of a Doris for Comics comic. So it's a bit. There's a lot more going on there. Uh, it's still got the kind of like accessible uh, kind of readableness. Um, but as you can see, uh, it was, and it's also playing with the format a lot of comics. So in this one, a character puts their hand outside of the panel, and then the panels change line, and so their hand gets cut off. And then later on, they drop their hand, and then it falls down and lands on the adult's head. And that's the punchline. Um, I love a punchline. So another example that takes it to the extreme. I always show this at talks because uh, no one understands this. I barely understand why this is funny. Uh, but it does make sense, and I just love the idea of explaining why a joke is funny to loads of people. Um, so, uh, this one... The, okay, here goes, here's the explanation of the joke. Um, <laughs> this character wants the punchline to be uh, in... Uh, they want the punchline to come quicker. So they pull the punchline into their panel, which means that by the time you get to the punchline, you're in the comic again, which means you end up with a recursive narrative, which means that the comic never ends and there's never a punchline. Clever, but every time I do this, I have to re remind myself why this makes sense. <laughs> so this is the kind of thing I was doing. It was very like trying to be really, really clever, really you know, uh, difficult comics in a way. And then it got a bit more uh, kind of you can see kind of blobby, uh, kind of um, fun characters. But I still I love. <laughs> uh, it's like a weird version of stand-up where I don't do the jokes. I've written them down ages ago. Um, I kind of love like body horror um, and making people feel weird. I kind of I enjoyed that. So this, and you can see there's sort of an oh no punchline in there already. I kind of really like that. But I used to labor over these comics. I used to spend ages making them and I would update sporadically. Uh, it might be, uh, you know, one a week, I, I would hope. Um, so it was, really, it was really difficult. Around that time, so this is about uh, 2015, relatable kind of comics. I was doing kind of weird gag comics, which were kind of bigger uh, before 2015. And then suddenly all these like relatable comics were, were you know, were uh, coming into the internet, becoming really popular. And all of us other webcomic artists were like, oh, they're really, really popular, but I have too much integrity to, <laughs> to do like what we, you know, what a lot of people saw as like uh, kind of observational humor, um, you know, f uh, that was very popular. So on April Fool's 2015, 
did a joke where uh, I did eight, uh, eight comics in one day, all of them relatable humor. Um, and I kind of thought rela relatable humor is just pointing at something and saying that happens. And it's not really a joke, it's just the simulation of humor, which is what I did. And that's what the oh no is, it's a, it's a simulation of a joke. This is the first <laughs> one I did. Internet themes, procrastination. There's millions of comics about procrastination. This is by far the most popular comic I did as Doris for Comics, which I found hilarious. Then I did introverts, everyone, you know. Uh, I'm also talking about introverts. Um, and as you can see, I used the purple background. I later changed to blue because it made it a bit more lighthearted, but Doris for Comics is always purple because it's dark and vibrant. That's a good design tip. Um, yeah, and then this cats, another internet theme. So I, there was eight of these, but there was about spiders, and the, yeah, it was, it was uh, all these internet things. Um, so then I sat on that for about uh, a year, just over a year. I didn't do anything with it. I was carrying on doing Doris for Comics, but I kept thinking like how fun that was. It was to make. It was very silly. It took me hardly any time, but I really enjoyed writing them. Uh, and then I started thinking about like what I could say with it. So the next thing I'm going to show you uh, might be a bit of a juxtaposition. Uh, is a poem by William Blake. And uh, <laughs> so this is, this is all the things that I, I was thinking about. So uh, this is, I, I studied English literature at university. I, I don't have like a uh, illustration or design background. I have a uh, writer's background. Or like, well, like the, uh, like a, I went to university, re I read books. And um, so this is the tiger. So the tiger, tiger burning bright, that poem. This poem is basically uh, about Someone looking at, William Blake's looking at a tiger and going, this is amazing. What, who made this? You know, what immortal hand or eye could frame this? Like, who, who could make this? The illustration, because he always illustrated all his poems, he basically made zines, all hand, handmade books. That's the only way that he ever made poems. His illustration, I don't know if you can see very clearly, is, 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 a, is a very sad looking tiger. It's not a good tiger. It's kind of scared of itself. Uh, and I think this is a gag. This is a gag. He's saying some sort of god figure made, made tigers. Look at my tiger. It's awful. I, uh, he's one of the best artists, like, like one of the greatest British artists uh, who's ever lived. I've, I have never seen another tiger drawing by William Blake. I'm pretty sure he could draw a really good tiger. But I love that gag. Uh, a similar one, kind of weirdly similar. Okay, this is uh, Last Man in Ass. Um, so I went to the, uh, while I was thinking about webcomic name, I went to the uh, Picasso Museum in Barcelona. Uh, the last room of that museum has loads of Picasso's versions of this painting. He's kind of obsessively, obsessively going through it and uh, doing his own versions of it. He, uh, he's basically just messing around and he kind of like, I feel like you're, you're messing with me. So look at the dog, okay? Look, at, look how beautiful that dog is. And then this is Picasso's version <laughs> of that dog. It's beautiful. I had a moment with this. This is probably the most profound moment I've had in front of a work of art. I was like, that dog is everything I want from art. <laughs> it's beautiful. So I kind of did my own version of it a bit later on. Um, um, that's how, and so it kind of took it a little bit further. This is how I draw cats. That's a, another running gag uh, in what I do is, uh, drawing cats in this way. This is an, a, a version of one you saw earlier, where I'd redrawn it for webcomic name. Hope you can see I kind of like tied up a little bit. Uh, it's still very silly. Got a little gag in there where the person on the internet is surfing the web. Little joke. Um, uh, so yeah. But basically, uh, when, when I was making Doris McComics, I was trying to make something really good, the best I could make. But what I... Uh, once I was trying to do that, I realized I was always you know, failing um, because it's never going to be this incredible, like, uh, groundbreaking thing. Instead, uh, what I did was lower everyone's expectations of me by making the worst comic that I could make. Uh, and then if, any, if it says anything more, then it's a bonus. And you're like, oh, that's great. Um, the, uh, the issue with that is started out as a parody of relatable web comics. And... It's gone on for quite a long time now. The joke has kind of um, worn a bit thin, uh, which is f I find funny. My plan was to make a, re a popular webcomic and then 
because uh, I knew what I was doing, but I was, you know, after doing Doris Comics, I knew what I was doing with web comic name, make a popular web comic, and I was like, yeah, okay, here, here it's going to be, it's going to have a catchphrase, look the same every time, be recognizable straight away, Th you know, small, um, there's an idea on the internet called the seven second rule, where uh, if you don't get something, in, in an internet now that's all feeds rather than uh, you, know, you go to someone's website to see things, on a feed, you need to get something in seven seconds, otherwise you, you, don't, you don't care. So this is like the ultimate of that, like I wanted to make, so it's the same joke every time, so you already know the joke, uh, and it's, always, it's already got a punchline ready-made, um, and uh, you get it in seven seconds. So now I'm at this point where I don't know if I'm a parody or not, and I, I am the thing, I am the, you know, the monster I was trying to destroy. Um, but I like to think that I've kind of, some of my audience, they, uh, you know, li like I do, like the comic, like relatable comics, just for their own sake. So, like, oh, that's nice. That's what a, f what a funny, silly comic. And then some people go, ah, but you, you've all been tricked because he's, a, he's parodying that. So you liking it is funny, and I can like it, but feel like I'm above you. <laughs> and I get to do both those things. I get to be both a silly, relatable webcomic and think, <laughs> pretend I'm better than that, uh, and sort of have seem like I have some integrity. <laughs> and that's the end. <laughs>